I never got used to the missing posters. Those photocopied faces staring back at me. As I locked up my classroom and headed down the darkened school hallway of the prestigious school of Avon Manor. It was late, but extra work meant extra hours, which meant extra money. Teachers always needed that, and lowly teacher's assistants like me, we needed it even more. I finished my grading and left the classroom, walking the darkened hallways of the school. Only the glow of the exit sign to lead my way. It should have been scary, but I was too tired to bother being spooked by the shadows or the echo of my footsteps. I passed the bulletin board, where pictures of the missing teachers adorned posters hung haphazardly. I was used to seeing missing children on milk cartons and news reports, but normal, full-grown adults who've just up and disappeared? That was another feeling altogether. There was one for Mr. Lesham, the boisterous music teacher that I knew liked to humiliate his students for menial errors, and another for the missing gym teacher, Mr. Morrow, a man that took sadistic pleasure in driving students to total exhaustion for the fun of it. Then a flash of movement startled me. It was a student, walking at the other end of the hall with her back to me. Hard to see in the dim light, but I could have sworn she had something in her hand. I called out to her. Excuse me, young lady. School's closed. You can't be here. I hurried after her, reaching the corner but she had already made her way through a door down to the basement under the school, where holiday decorations and props from old school plays were kept. Annoyed, I walked after the student, calling out again. Miss, stop what you're doing this instant. Even though I was just a TA, I figured I had enough authority to stop a kid from skulking around after hours. But still, no answer. Now she had wounded my pride, so I stalked after her down into the basement, the walls wet with moisture from the rusty pipes and the old brick walls from the original foundation. That was a simpler time, I thought, when children listened to their elders. I stumbled past old decorations from school spirit week, then past the old art supplies. I could just see the shadows of the girl moving ahead. If this was a prank, someone was going to get in so much trouble, maybe even expelled. Then. I saw them. I dropped my cell phone, its light swirling madly as it spun on the floor. My breath caught in my throat. I'd found the missing teachers. Mr. Morrow, the boorish gym teacher, swung from the pipes overhead, choked by his own jump ropes, hands and feet bound. He'd been hogtied and left to swing, his face purple and bloated tongue turning black from the weeks spent rotting from a rope. His lips had pulled back as he began to decay, revealing rotten teeth, clenched tight for eternity. Next to him was the body of Mr. Lesham, the music teacher who hated rung notes so much he'd wrapped the students with his conductor's baton. I was horrified as I looked into his glassy eyes, his body propped against the wall. The baton had been jammed straight from one ear to the other dried blood crusted down the side of his head. All I could think of as the bile rose in my throat was the last thing he must have heard it was his own eardrums rupturing and the scraping of the wood as it was driven into his brain. Then I heard the whimper, an old, frail voice I recognized, Mrs. Madison. Please, I didn't mean to be cruel. I, I just wanted to. But a wet squishing sound cut her off turning her voice into a pained squeal. I crept forward, peering around the corner, where I finally saw her. The body of Miss Madison, with a hundred pencils jammed into her. Her eyes, her mouth, her throat and lungs. Each one had sticky, blackened blood all around it. Clearly, someone had been at this for a while. The dark figure I had followed down here was standing over her having come to finish what it had started. That was when I realized who I had been trailing. I heard her before I saw her clearly. That low, wheezing sound. Her breathing. The shk, shk of her field hockey stick dragging along the ground. The dark figure raised a final pencil over its head, then brought it right down between Mrs. Madison's eyes, finally killing her. 
My stomach tightened. I knew what would happen when the figure turned around. I was dead. My lips quivered, <sighs> tears in my eyes as the shadow slowly shifted to look at me. I heard the swinging of the hockey stick, the old wood slicing through the air as it swung towards my jugular vein, ready to hack my head from my body. But then, no pain came. No bloody, gruesome death. I wasn't dead. I could feel something hard pressed against my throat, keeping me from begging for my life, from crying or from screaming. I didn't want to open my eyes, but I knew I had to. I could hear her, right in my ear, wet and raspy breathing so close I could smell that fetid breath, sticky sweet like roadkill. I opened my eyes and there she was, beside me, hockey stick held against my throat. Shelly. All she had to do was twist the handle and she'd rip out my esophagus, pull the air right out of me. With any luck, she'd break my neck and I wouldn't feel anything. Shelly raised her hand, fingernails black and rotten, skin pale as cream, veiny and thin. With a twitching jerk, she pointed to the wall. Terrified to twist my head for fear of losing it, I struggled to see what was written on the wall deep in the basement. My eyes were losing focus, the oxygen escaping me as the hockey stick pushed against my neck. Finally, what was on the wall became clear in the darkness, written in chalk and blood, smeared along old brick. I saw what was written. Then, as quick as she came, <sighs> Shelley was gone. I fell to the ground, knees giving way. As soon as I could stand, I ran from that basement, never looking back. She could have chased me. I could feel her watching me as I left. I've never told anyone this story. I've kept Shelly's secret. That's why she let me live, I think. To keep her secret. And to remember. I still teach these days, and have for many years. Once Mrs. Madison was gone, I got the promotion to full-time teacher I knew I deserved. Same classroom, same course, same books and lessons. But whenever I find myself angry at the students, ready with a mean comment or a cruel punishment, I remember what Shelley had written on the wall of the basement all those years ago. Teachers can be bullies too. Watch new vids every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, only on Crypt TV.